Hello viewers, Marianne from Revealing Light Tarot. How are we all today, wherever you are in the world? When you're watching this, a huge shout out to you. Yes, it's very cold where I am today. Um, I hadn't planned on doing a channeling today, but when I opened up for the reading, I threw a line to, um, to James Dean, who had come forward before, and he took it really quickly. Now, the image that I got coming forward was firstly someone in a suit, uh, and I question whether or not that was actually James Dean, not how I expected him to turn up. For those that don't know, he was a Hollywood icon. Um, I think I haven't done any research, so, you know, you people will probably bring some of that forward. Um, but he was around during the 50s and 60s, I think. Um <laughs> You can see I've not done any, uh, not you know, other than what I anecdotally know. Um, he was killed uh, very early in his 20s, I think, uh, in a car crash. He was uh, someone that liked to race. Um, his movies include Rebel Without a Cause, um, Giant uh, with Elizabeth Taylor and Rock Hudson, I think it was. Um, these are all Hollywood uh you know, royalty elite from the 50s, 40s, 50s and 60s. So we're going back a long way here. I don't know why he's come forward, but let me just catch up because he's going really quickly. Maybe that's um, he, you know, in his nature to do that. He used to like to race cars. He was killed uh, in a Porsche car. Uh, and there are many, um, many stories about that car being haunted. Um, whether or not that's true, I don't know. But let's start from the beginning. He first appeared as a uh, person in a suit with his hands in his pocket walking out of a light, um, a bright light, um, which is sometimes how uh, spirits come forward. Uh, when I questioned, was this actually James Dean? Uh, he then hopped on a motorbike uh, with a kind of bomber jacket with his hands again in his pocket. So he's always got his hands in his pocket. Uh, I'm not quite sure. It, he, I think he, he says it um, that it could have been because he was a, a fidgeter, you know, like it gave him something to do with his hands. He didn't necessarily want to talk with his hands. He wanted to talk uh, people to con concentrate on the expressions on his faith face because he was uh, what I would call a method actor, um, whether or not that's correct, but he uh, got into the role. And in fact, what has been a legacy that he's quite comfortable with is his acting because he, he took, that was him. That was, that was what it was all about. Um, he so back to the motorbike I also got uh shutters so I don't know where he lived at the time but I'm I'm very much getting those white um you know that plantation shutter type of look um if that was his home uh it it, it could have had it, I don't know why he's sh showing me the shutters but there again there's a metaphor in that that um you know he probably had difficulty because uh, some of you brought Britney Spears forward and what she's going through with an enforced conservatorship for 13 years, which is absolutely unbelievable. But anyway, it's like a difficulty shut putting the shutters in that everything was always on show. Um, but getting back to why he uh, he came forward in the first place, it was around... There were uh, rumours around him being uh, gay, um, and if not gay, then bisexual. He uh, was in a loving relationship, so because um, I wondered if that if that's what what he wanted to talk about, but it, it's not. He wants to talk. He was in. <laughs> so I looked it up. I thought, "What's James Dean gay?" Um, again, not wanting to, you know, do the whole. Let's find out about James Dean before I uh, channel him. But I, I was curious as to why, what he wanted to talk uh, about. Because unless I really know that at a very deep level, I'm reluctant to to use my uh, mediumship to to actually engage with them until I know exactly whether whether they're coming forward with a real message um, or whether or not it's just something 
something else and I want to get that message right so I take these intuitive feelings long story short um he was in a loving relationship for some time with a with a woman um but there were those those rumors that he was uh, gay and he's become that kind of iconic iconic um uh person for um lgbt L lgb oh now i've got that wrong too um for those issues <laughs> okay so um it's just things are going so quickly here it's it's like it's like it's a little bit hard to uh to to kind of slow things down so let's slow things down a bit okay so um let's go back to the image that he wants me to see so yeah i'm just getting these holly you know these hollywood images you know and again, he's saying that I'm falling into the same track that we all fall into. We want to narrow someone down. And this is his prime message for coming through, whether he was gay, whether he's bisexual, whether he's heterosexual, all three does not really matter um, because it's about, uh, you know, getting out of the groove uh, because the groove is the slow lane. OK, now I'm getting it here. Uh and expanding um, and shrugging off what people think of you as well. That um, he didn't really care because he had this really deep, and this is where his method acting comes in into it. He had this really deep belief in in himself. He had this really deep belief in the power of of of, of his ability not to stay in one groove to to take multiple uh, multiple tracks to not be defined by rebel without a cause was one of his other movies not to be defined by anybody and this is what he i think some of the britney spears stuff is that people put their own expectations onto people and those expectations are so heavy on people that if you're not strong enough and Dean was strong enough I might add um yeah he had a powerful belief in himself he says uh and that's a good thing um if they're not strong enough or if that belief isn't strong isn't strong enough then they get just submerged under people's expectations and I think this is what he's saying uh or what I'm saying making the link between um, that statement and Britney Spears that she was actually just flooded, flooded uh, with other people's expectations and, and not, you know, maybe she does now know how to carve out her own uh, identity, which would embrace everything she's been through. Maybe that's what we'll see in the next decade, that she embraces her uh, particular uh, mind and the way it thinks Um her past and all of you know the skeletons if you like there um her mental health um issues um and her fame and everything that's happened to her that's what she's wanting to do and the conservative conservatorship is corralling her it is putting this iron ring around her uh which she is unable to break out of at this time because the courts and her supposed loving family have imposed this conservatorship on her uh, a lot of this is around money she has been um picked at because of money um okay back to james dean because this is leading me also into why people do things um why they go out there and do the wrong thing or step out of a moral code and a lot of that is uh due to money and you'll find some of that in the trump camp as well trump himself and others like him wanting to pedal it's it's like a, a hawker on a street corner peddling so i just wanted to say that but back to james dean um because he had such a powerful belief in himself that translated to the screen and people felt that people feel that people know that um one of the things he is upset about is a this false narrative that i mentioned the other day that uh, uh whether he was speeding or not because uh this speed thing 
um, and stepping outside of his track um, is kind of like a metaphor for people wanting to put you back into that. So because they don't really understand anything else, they have to have a narrative that makes them feel comfortable. And he said what he did was he busted that open. Um, so, uh, okay, so let's go back to clairvoyant images. I'm just seeing a bright, he's on his motorcycle, he's got this bright illuminating light. And in a way, he's saying this illuminated a way ahead for many that came after him, many actors of influence that came after him, that busting out of that uh, role, that, that one-way street, that they want to put you into um, through the power of the self um, created in a way open the gate for actors to believe so strongly in themselves that they brought that power to their performances uh, and, and you'll see the actors of renown do that they have this strong belief in themselves so um he says also that part of his personality and, you know, no blame attached, um, part of his personality uh, did want to speed things up uh, because, again, you know, going going slowly, time. He was always conscious of time and um, he said maybe he knew at some point that he wouldn't make uh, old bones, as they say. He wanted to live his life as... Um, spontaneously, I'm getting the word spontaneously as he could uh, when he wasn't acting. And that's why he uh, raced cars, uh, because it was totally uh, an unplanned thing. You got in and you were in that moment, That's that moment of speed, I guess. You were in that moment. Um, now, I want to go to why this crash. What's he showing me here? So show me a wheel rolling away from a car. Was this crash due... Is this driver error? It was due to driver error. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's just have a look. So I'm not even sure, focus, focusing on the wheel again, um, I'm not even sure that someone didn't have a blowout, um, a tyre blowout, I'm, because it keeps focusing on this wheel. What's going on here? So as I understand it, uh, another car pulled out in front of him. He couldn't pull up in time because he was allegedly speeding. But a policeman on the scene says that he wasn't speeding. Um, I have to blame people for tragedies, is what I'm saying, see, what I'm hearing him say. Everyone has to blame somebody for a tragedy. And he acknowledges that, you know, there was wide-scale grieving when he went, a bit like, uh, was he? He wasn't mates with Elvis Presley. Maybe, maybe they've hooked up. Uh, hooked up together in the afterlife um there's always a tragedy you know always someone to blame uh he said if he had of you know maybe not you know been racing not had this thing for cars and motorbikes um you know lived a more sedentary life yeah he he may not have um but he says he may not have lived that's what he wants me to say um he may not have lived so being in the present moment, being spontaneous was the real was the real joy for him, a real joy for him, because he planned in his other life, in his acting life, he plans things so meticulously. Um, everything was, uh, he said, yes, there was elements of spontaneity in his acting, but getting into a role uh, took so much transference of himself, which, of course, you know, it's about decisions and it's about, um, uh, planning to allow that transference um, to get into the character role. So it was heavy. His acting he took really, really, really seriously. What, why am I getting the word Panama? I'm not, I don't know why I'm getting that word. I'm just getting, 
Did he travel to South America? I'm just, you know, the plantation shutters. There's something here around that or, or the deep south. Um, I'm just not sure what, why he's giving me those images. I'm seeing a ladder too climbing up into a loft. Um, so he may have had a hideaway somewhere where he went, a cabin in the woods, for example, where he went to get away from things um, or it could be a place that he spent a lot of time at as a boy um, I'm just getting this cabin and him climbing up almost to, to the loft um, it's a cabin in the woods um, so why did you come forward when you did why did you come forward Okay, he wants to counsel people literally against allowing themselves to go into that one-way groove um, that uh, other people decide for you. And he says that there's too much. Some of the division that we're seeing at the moment is people rebelling, re rebelling, rebel with the cause, uh, rebelling against being put into that one-way track, one-way groove. Um, and he says they try and bust out of that. And we pigeonhole them too. Even someone like a QAnon person, we pigeonhole them. Every time we pigeonhole them, we create an identity and a persona and an energy that's really difficult to shift. So this is, this is why he wanted to come forward, um, and maybe this is a learning lesson for me too, that in the past I've taken on certain personas, have not allowed that expansive stuff to occur, uh, which we are not one dimensional. We are multidimensional, even in our own personality. I'm not talking spiritual. Oh, it's hard to separate spirituality from, uh, from psycho psychology, I guess. Um, but we are not one dimensional people. And he, he really wants to get that through. And uh, he lived his life, um, you know, like there was a fire at his heels in order to expand uh, his consciousness. And the way that he did that was by, um, he kind of like would have grasped onto or followed down Anything that was new or experimental or, uh, again, because, you know, he he wanted to absorb this. He wanted to find out about it. I don't know what his intellect was like, but I'm just getting a person with a very keen intellect. Um, the reason that he showed up in the suit and then in the, the, the leather jacket, uh, they, are two, they are the same people. They are him. And the clothes don't define the person. He could just as easily hop into a uh, a, a, a suit, a pipe, what do they call it? Pipe stove suit um, with a pin, uh, pin tie, like a thin tie and look and swagger coolly as what he could when he hopped on the, on the motorbike because they're just props, he says. They're just props. He, it was, it is who you are underneath all of that and the power of who you are underneath all of that, that matters. So he says, you know, be yourself. Don't allow others to define you. Define yourself. Define your pathways forward. Don't let anybody pigeonhole you. Um, and this also takes courage as well. But there is something that came to me the other day that the courage to do what we consider the hard thing is often the courage is often the easy thing. Um, and if we can just have the courage to open that gate up, we'll find that it's not as hard as what we thought. Um, and it saves us a whole, in some cases he's saying lifetime of pain. So why did he exit when he did? Um, he says there was like an off ramp, literally like an off ramp. Um, and that I don't think at the time he really realised he kind of went to another pathway because it was instinctive to him. And of course, that pathway was the afterlife. But he is saying it is his time. And he is saying he did know very early on he just had this kind of six 
sense that he would not uh, live to make old age. And that was part of what drove him the fire at his heels to live life to uh, the full, fullest and to be as sponta spontane spontaneous as he could be. Because he said spontaneity is um, the power to be in the now. Um, when we stop thinking of uh, forward and we stop thinking of reverse, <laughs> uh, when we are in the now uh, is when uh, the greatest moments come forward. The greatest joy can come forward when we're in the now. Um, okay, so what else have you got? What else are you showing me? What else do you want to bring forward? <laughs> yeah, he's just talking about the speed. Uh, the, I'm getting the motorbike here, and that is another way to uh, get outside the uh, the slow lane. Um, yeah, look, I don't think he has any regrets about the way that he's li he lived his life. I don't think he's got any regrets. No, he's saying no, sir. Um, <laughs> he did not. He did not have any regrets about the way he lived his life and what happened uh, in when he passed. Um, or how it happened. Um, because he's saying you just got to sort of love it all. He's just like this really, I don't know, he just had this big thirst, I think. Ah, oh, no, now, he, yeah, he had a big thirst for life, but he's also pointing out some um, plummets, some depression there. Uh, what is this? So he could, as, as much as he was high, he, he could also go right low as well. Um, and, it, and this could have been as a result of, of the way, the pace at which he lived his life. And he says that Hollywood stars, if you want to refer them like that, operate at this really high level. And so when they're up high like this, um, they can't maintain that. And so they go really low. I think he might have was he on uppers and downers? That he's giving me that kind of image, um, because they're working twenty four hours a day when they're filming, um, and they're main, having to maintain that really high. He's saying this is how drug taking starts. The in order they can't maintain that, so they drop, and then they're artificially uh, inflated, <laughs> artificially inflated. And he said, and what happens to the person within is that they lose lose touch with the reality because they're surrounded by this artificial uh, high, I guess. Uh, and then when it's no longer there, uh, it reduces them. It's like they're a shell. And so they have to chase the next high and the next high. So I'm not sure if he, he did drug take, but he's kind of giving me that kind of um, message there. Um, so the main thing he wants to bring forward is to just not to let people, uh, be a rebel, be a rebel with a cause, be a rebel without a cause. That's what he wants me to say. Be a rebel without a cause. Live your life as spontaneously as what you can and do not allow other people to define you. Okay, now he's giving me the picture of an old man with a, a greying moustache on the veranda. So, why are you giving me this? Was that your father? And he's in a, in a rocking chair. What is this? You don't have to wait till you're of that age to be, to have that wisdom. Um, but he is also saying that when you are in that elderly stage, you want to look back, you want to have a pile full of memories to look back on and, and experiencing and experiencing that joy. 
So you don't want to have memories of the down times. You want the memories that will cut through are the sheer joy, are the sheer joy. And they're the ones in elder older age that you hang on to. So it is really those moments of exhilaration, of happiness, of joy that you remember. And uh, in my bike riding video of this week, uh, I took people back to their childhood jaunts on bikes and the joy that people were reliving was really lovely. Uh, I did take a risk going down that hill uh, and I went quite quickly. That was okay too. Again, it's all it's all part of the ride. So um, I'm just going to see, I'm, I'm going to draw some, oric, I guess, oracle cards and then we'll close this off. Um, just to see, double down on a few of those messages. This is the Oracle of Seven Energies. It's a new one by Colette Baron Reed. I don't know if it's a new deck, but it's a new one that I got this week. Um, okay. Rebel without a cause. What do you have to say? Because he says the causes will find you. Um, it's about being, again, living in the moment, living in the flow, um, not being afraid to take another path. Um, it's like getting the most out of life and um, really believing in yourself, really believing in yourself. It's that's when you get your wings, he says. Don't have to wait till you become an angel in the afterlife to get those wings. You can get them right here on this earth. Okay, so what do you need to tell me, James Dean? Oh, he's showing me this beautiful woman, like a ball gown, like a dressed in a... Oh, how beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I should... I used to always love to play dress-ups in my mother's evening gowns. Um, yeah, just whatever you want to do, do it. Don't hold off. Just do it. Okay, so what do you need to show me? Yeah, if you want to do ballet, do it. If you want to dance at the ripe old age of, you know, 50, do it. Um, he said, turn him, he's showing me, he's walking upside down like the earth has flipped. And he's walking upside down. He said, turn everything on its tail. Okay. Show me what you need to tell me. He says, like, get that, get that darkness between the teeth. So, sort of like get the bit between the teeth and go after it. Okay, a grand symphony, <laughs> that's what life can be, um, number 27, a grand symphony, making your own music. Um, and all of this is new growth uh, when you do that. You are the grand symphony. Waking the lion, oh yeah, waking the power of the belief, the strength um, in yourself. Waking the lion. Who's the lion? You have the courage to live, to live the way you want to live. And the power of purpose, setting your intentions. There's the wheel. The wheel that I saw at the beginning um, was rolling away. Uh, and this is the power of purpose, living with purpose, living with intention, uh, living with change as well. Uh, this is also Jupiter energy, expansion, expansion and luck. One more, please. Spirit of gratitude, being grateful for who you are. A lot of people aren't. A lot of people want to be somebody else. A lot of people look to others and go, I wish I was them. Be grateful for who you are. Believe in yourself, the power to be you. Okay, and a higher view a higher view, uh, maybe that's what he's giving us at this time, this higher view, that's the owl there, owl, a kind of an, the wisdom, don't have to be, that could have been the elderly man, but you don't have to wait till you're that age to be wise, uh, you can be wise at any age, let it go, let it go, let go of other people's expectations, live, um, live via the heart, 
and live with that power of belief in yourself. Okay. All right, let's just check in with him and see what else he wants to say. What else do you want? No, he's on his motorbike. He's on his motorbike. It's got a like a skull, like a like a pirate emblem on the front of it. Um, <laughs> now he's turning away. Oh gosh, he was a rebel, that's for sure. Um, He's turning away and he's tipping, he now got his hat, he's like in the wild west, uh, he's tipping his hat and he's riding off. So thank you. I hope I got your messages out. He keeps showing me around, get you know, taking that, um, really being determined to live, to live uh, the way you want to live and not according to anyone else else's dictates. Um, so thank you. I did what you asked of me and I channeled those messages. So um, I'll let it go now. Let it go. I'll let it go now. He'll let it go. Um, and we'll uh, finish this channeling off. I hope you enjoyed that. Another spontaneous channel channeling. Uh, that's the way I like them. Unplanned, unscripted, just here in the moment. Let's see what they've got to say. Thanks for tuning in, viewers.